Hey everyone, welcome to another tech review. Today I'm going to review this monitor. This is the Dell UP2718Q. This is a 27-inch monitor that supports 4K resolution at 60 Hz. Dell has sent this monitor over to me a few weeks ago and I have been using this monitor to do some content creation so my review will be from the perspective of a content creator I use this monitor to edit videos, to edit photographs and I also do a bit of graphic design on this monitor now the main selling point of this monitor is actually the HDR10 standard that it supports. I'm going to talk a bit more about that later on but first let's talk about the physical design of this monitor. Now the design of this monitor is very similar to all the other Dell monitors. It looks pretty much um, if I were to compare different Dell monitors, different series I will not be able to differentiate the different type of monitors because they look pretty much the same. Even the stand behind is the same. They have this hole for the cable. The bezel on this monitor is quite thin but not as thin compared to the Infinity H monitors like the UP2716D. Now uh, one thing I like about this monitor or with most Dell monitors is um, you can adjust the uh, rotation, the height, the swivel, it has full adjustability for all those things. And if you want to mount this monitor on a VESA arm, you can do so as well. Let's take a look at the ports behind. These are the ports included, two HDMI full-size ports, one full-size display port, one mini display port, two upstream USB three ports and two downstream USB three ports. These are the two USB three ports on the side of the monitor. The Dell UP2718Q uses an IPS panel so color reproduction is pretty good. Now this is a matte surface screen with anti-glare coating. It's not those glass reflective screens and this is the type of screens that I prefer when it comes to editing content and this is the color gamut that it is supposed to support on paper we have 100% ODB RGB, sRGB, REC 709, 98% DCI-P3, 77% REC 2020 I have used my color calibrator to calibrate this screen and I got a readout of 98% Adobe RGB, 100% sRGB and all these three I wasn't able to measure them but I got a 94% NTSC support. So color accuracy for this screen is pretty good. I'm using Final Cut 10 to edit my videos on the Mac and this app has been written to support 4K resolution so all these words here, all these fonts, all these icons here, all these images are very sharp. They have been updated to take advantage of the 4K resolution and this video is now playing at 60 frames per second and it actually feels a bit jerky because my computer system is not that powerful to play this 4K file that smoothly and also the camera settings that I'm using to record this is actually at 25 frames per second so it's going to look a bit jerky but uh, in terms of resolution, in terms of sharpness and the colors this is pretty accurate the earlier clip was played with QuickTime 7 and now I'm back on Final Cut. Final Cut is able to play uh, 4K content uh, more smoothly but it is an optimized version of the 4K content so it's not as sharp. But the main important thing is it can play the video smoothly and that is very important when it comes to editing videos. So this is quite smooth. I really enjoy editing 4K content with Final Cut. Earlier on I was talking about how you need the app to be updated to take advantage of 4K resolution and here I'm running Photoshop CS5 which is a very old version of Photoshop and this app is not uh, updated to take advantage of the 4K resolution as such. Many of the user interface, the buttons, the icons and even the fonts here, they are all pixelated even at 100%. Now let me compare this app, Photoshop CS5, with another app called Affinity Photo which has been updated for 4K resolution. 
This is Photoshop CS5. I opened the same file with Affinity Photo. Can you see how sharp this line is compared to the anti-aliasing or the pixelated edge here? Let me move some of the palettes into screen to let you see uh, some of the pixelation. Can you see the pixelation? And also the two bar. It's also a bit pixelated. When you hit uh, Control N to get those dialog boxes, all the fonts here, they are pixelated as well. So if you are still using older software that has not been updated for high resolution screens, for example, Photoshop CS5, then you will not be able to see the actual sharpness of the file that you are working on. Here's another example. This is a page layout created in Adobe Illustrator. I have saved the file in EPS mode, so I'm able to open this file, this EPS file with Affinity Designer. And I'm going to zoom into this area where uh, there is some text here. Both files have been zoomed to 100% and the text here on affinity photo this is very sharp because this is supposed to be vector text and this is adobe illustrator cs5 this is supposed to be vector text as well but because the app has not been updated to take advantage of high resolution screens everything appears to be pixelated so if you want to do graphic design on this screen this monitor you need to make sure that the app that you are using it has been updated to take advantage of high res screens you can do a check on the app's website or do a check on online forums and the next app that i want to show you is adobe photoshop lightroom i'm using version 5.7 so this app is actually strangely uh, updated to support 4k resolution so we have the words here all these words all these icons um, everything looks very sharp and when i zoom in to 100 percent i can see fantastic details because of the high res screen uh, all the pixels are very condensed and i'm not able to see individual pixels i'm just looking at the image and i can see a lot of details and that is the advantage of using a 4k screen when it comes to editing photographs now this is significantly sharper compared to the 27 inch monitor that i'm currently using which runs a resolution of 2560 by 1440 this is the backlight test. I am actually recording this in the afternoon and I am not able to black out my room completely. That's why you can still see some light. All right, so this is backlit by LED and in addition to that, there are 384 local dimming zones. And from what I can see, the backlighting is pretty even. Perhaps this area is slightly it's just very slightly brighter this area is actually more obvious from what i can see with my eye but overall the backlighting is pretty even just that um, this area here is brighter the full array local dimming zones basically means that you can have the brightest bright against the darkest dark and that applies to hdr content and by the way i'm watching the, the infant which is supposed to be hdr content the other day when I was looking at iTunes, here it says that it's HDR content, but today it's just HD content, so I do not know what's going on. But the thing is, even without the HDR 10, I'm really enjoying this uh, movie, the quality of this movie, the colors, the contrast, it looks very good. HDR, by the way, if you do not know, it's called high dynamic range. And with high dynamic range content, you are supposed to be able to see details in the brightest areas and details in the darkest areas. Now take, for example, when you're taking a photograph on a very bright and sunny day, when you take a photograph, you can see a lot of beautiful details for areas that are well lit but for shadow areas most of the shadows are going to be very harsh very dark and details in the shadows they are not going to be seen uh, clearly because all the details is lost in the darkness however with hdr you are actually supposed to be able to see the details in the shadows uh, just like how our eyes work 
Unfortunately, HDR content is not widely supported on computer systems like Windows, Mac. If you are actually subscribing to Netflix, they are able to stream HDR content, but they can only stream it through their app. So if you are watching uh, content through the web browser, well, HDR standard is not supported for streaming through the web browser. So you're not going to be able to get the advantage of watching HDR content through web browsers. And for me, when I tried downloading HDR content from the iTunes store, when I watched this on the monitor, on this monitor, personally, when I'm watching HDR content on this monitor, I do not see any difference, any significant difference between watching on this monitor versus on my BenQ monitor, which is the SW2700, which is an IPS monitor with great color accuracy as well. So the film is equally as bright and I can see a lot of details unless I compare it side by side I really cannot tell uh, what's the difference so this is actually 4k content 4k HDR content that I downloaded from the iTunes store and it looks great on this monitor yes it is but it looks great on my BenQ monitor or on any other IPS monitor as well. HDR content is better supported on TVs. For example, we have Netflix streaming HDR content, Apple iTunes stream HDR through the Apple TV 4K. If you want to watch HDR content on this monitor, it is best that you connect a player that can stream or play HDR content on this so that you can really um, see the potential. As of right now, HDR content is not widely supported on computer system so personally I would not be getting a HDR monitor like this for playing HDR content I would get an actual TV that supports HDR 10 this is a 27 inch monitor that supports 4k resolution so everything is supposed to look sharp on this monitor provided that the app that you use actually has been written to scale up to 4k resolution so what about editing HDR content like HDR photos or videos? Personally, I do not edit HDR content, so I have very limited knowledge. But the thing is, you now this monitor is supposed to support up to 1000 nits because of the HDR10 standard. In actual um, usage, the typical brightness is only around 400 and Personally for me, I don't use up to 400, I use only 250. So do you need to edit, do you need a HDR monitor to be able to edit HDR content? The answer is definitely no. So this monitor is a monitor that I think is suitable for um, those people who want to watch HDR content on your computer, but, but HDR content is quite limited on the computer system so with the same amount of money that you are going to spend on this monitor I would recommend that you get a TV that supports HDR10 instead so that you can take advantage of the players that play Netflix or Amazon or the Apple TV that can stream HDR actual HDR content for content creators, I probably would not recommend this monitor as well because there are other capable monitors that have great color accuracies from Dell or from other brands because this monitor, um, I mean the color accuracy is good but for example the Dell UP2716D, the color accuracy for that is also very good. That monitor can also support up to 98 or 99% Adobe RGB but that monitor is significantly cheaper compared to this so in terms of value for money if you are a content creator um, it might be better to uh, get the 2716D other features that I forgot to mention earlier is this monitor actually has a KVM switch. What that means is you can use one monitor to connect to two computer systems. For example, you can have Windows running here and Mac running there. And when you change the input source, um, you can use the same mouse and keyboard when you switch between Windows and Mac. So that's quite helpful. The other feature is it has picture in picture. So again, if you're running Windows, you can show uh, the Windows screen here and use the Mac screen as the main screen. So that's picture in picture. 
This is a true 10-bit IPS panel and even comes with an internal lookup table for those people who need that. Now this is a very specific, a very niche product that's targeting a very small group of users. Personally, I'm not the type of users that would get this monitor, but if you are, this is a quality monitor to consider. The only drawbacks to this monitor would be the price. It's a bit expensive compared to other monitors and also the other drawback is the lack of HDR content right now on computer systems. But if you are willing to wait for new titles to come out or if you're someone who spends a lot of time on the screen, then yeah, sure, you can get those HDR players and connect to the screen. You will have access to all your HDR content. And that's all for my review today. If I have any updates, I will update my text review. The link will be in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this review is helpful in some way. See you in the next video. Bye.